mandatory minicamp. It doesn't get underway until June 11th, but Marvin Lewis will tell you that these three weeks leading up to it, just as important. Two more sets of three-day on-field coaching sessions beginning on Tuesday with the players reporting the training camp in Georgetown exactly 10 weeks from today. Hot and humid on Friday, making the guys feel like they're in Georgetown a little bit early. Carson Palmer working on his timing with pro bowler Chad Johnson, who's looking for 1,800 yards again this year. The other Johnson, Rudy. He told me his goal for this year, 1,500 yards on the ground, minimum. The bar's already being set high for Marvin's second year. For the guys who've been here, it's, uh, you know, we've got a year under our belts in the system. And now, it, you know, it's a little easier this year, I, I say, you know, you know, these workout sessions because we're, it's almost like a review right now. You know, after a long vacation, uh, off season, you know, you, uh, you kind of get anxious to get back out there, you know, get to feel the things, and uh, it's been good. Report to Georgetown to begin summer training camp two-a-days. Now, till then, Marvin Lewis and his staff working with the players in coaching sessions, and minicamp comes June 11th. It's all designed to bring togetherness to this team. It's just getting snaps, getting repetition, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, we, 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 like everything else, football is about repetition. The more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. So, you know, right now we're getting repetitions at different plays, different si situations, scenarios um, that should help us out when the season gets started. Basically, it's all the basic, basic formations, basic passes and run plays, and getting them all down to making them your bread and butter once the season get, you know, comes along. Those plays that you'll do throughout the year, that should be 100%, no matter what situation you're in. It, it was great, you know, your basic package, that's basically what's going in now. And it's a big weekend in the life of NFL rookies as they get their first trading cards. In this case, Bengals running back Chris Perry striking a pose for his first card from Donruss, former Miami and Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger also in on the shoot, which took place in Los Angeles yesterday. Oh, definitely it's a dream come true, you know, wearing an NFL uniform for the first time. Um, it's something that you dream about since you were little, you know, ever since you started playing football, you know, and you, you beat a lot of odds to make it, so it's really uh, satisfying to put the jersey on. That's a dream come true, one, to play in the NFL, and then, you know, to have a kid open up a pack of cards like I did, and, you know, maybe be looking for my card, going out and buying as many packs as you can to, you know, maybe find the card that he's looking for. And never Welcome back. So far this offseason, Bengals news is centered around Rudy Johnson's contract extension, and the additions made to the secondary. But I guess no news is good news when it comes to a new starting quarterback. Carson Palmer has impressed coaches and players alike during the on-field coaching sessions. And when you watch practice, it seems like a seamless transition from the veteran John Kitna to the second-year player Carson Palmer. More importantly, the receivers are confident in his ability to move this offense. Oh, he looked great, man. I mean, you know, he don't, he don't have no pressure on him right now, but... He's completing every pass, and he ain't throwing no, he's not throwing no interception. And, you know, it's just a plus factor, just sitting back there watching him. You know, he, he hasn't had experience in the game time, but, you know, he I think he knows what it takes to be a champion. He's a high trophy winner. He throws the ball different. Um, he's got different release and, and our time, and that's why we have to stay, you know, and work extra because, you know, starting quarterback, uh, new quarterback, so we're going to have to do things, um, you know, to fit uh, his needs. So uh, we just continue to work day in and day out. and. and he is hoping one of Cincinnati's biggest offseason pickups is a pick-me-up in the middle of his linebacking core. Marshall Harris has more on how the Bengals' D is making room for Nate Webster. Here comes a blitz, and he goes down Webster got it. As a linebacker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for four seasons, Nate Webster's played alongside some of the game's greatest defenders. Learning from Hardy Nicholson, uh, Derek Brooks, uh, John Lynch, you know, Warren Sapp, those guys like that. Um, you just learn uh, how to, you know, conduct the huddle, call the plays, you know, uh, be the leader that you need to be uh, out there on the field. He's still learning, but now it's a new system with a new team. And Webster's hoping to help patch up a defense that ranked 26th last season. We've got a year under our belts in the system, and now, it, you know, it's a little easier this year, I, I say, you know, you know, these workout sessions because we're, it's almost like a review right now. It's truly a visit to the archives for Kevin Hardy. With Webster in the middle, Hardy's moving back to the strong side, where he knows his way around just fine. Well, I think he's excited about it, we're excited about it, because, I mean, the guy made the Pro Bowl playing that position, and it's kind of like a homecoming for him. The funny thing is, I was talking to Adrian Ross the other day, and, uh, you know, he was playing, you know, he played to Sam uh, last year, and we had a couple plays, you know, this year, when I went to him, and I was like, man, you know, on this certain play, this happens. He was like, that's what I was trying to tell you last year. <laughs> Brian Simmons stays put on the weak side. 
This week's on-field coaching sessions help him adapt to the new ingredients around him. You know, right now we're getting repetitions at different plays, different situations, scenarios um, that should help us out once the season gets started. And hopefully help the linebacking core raise their unit play to a greater level. Marshall Harris. Local. Appears they are on the verge of concluding a deal with defensive tackle Daryl Gardner. He's 6'6", 310 pounds, and played for Marvin Lewis two years ago in Washington. Butch Hobson of the Bengals.com suggests the deal could be done by Thursday. And I hate to see this happen. Nick Ayers, good guy. Free agent out of Glen Estee High School in Georgetown College. Yeah, he was cut today. Ayers was a local favorite and a self-proclaimed long shot to make the team. We wish him luck. And how about this for Enterprise? Steve Chanel, head football coach at Edgewood, was at practice today as Marvin Lewis's guest. Chanel was taking notes and didn't miss a trick. He told us how all this transpired. I called Coach Lewis if I'd come down and just kind of job shadow him for a day and learn how he organizes things and how they run practices and, and so forth. It's been a very eventful day and I'm learning quite a bit. I'd love to take some of the athletes back, but uh, what I'd like to take back to Edgewood uh, learning here today is just the organizational part, the uh, tempo of how practice runs, the organizational part of practice, and uh, just everything on a positive, upbeat note. Got to admire the man's chutzpah. Back to the final. Marvin Lewis and the Bengals began last season 0-3, and even though it's only July 11th, this weekend's mandatory minicamp is a very important step toward making sure that doesn't happen again. Let's go to Paul Brown Stadium this weekend. All about timing on both sides of the ball. Carson Palmer, oh, a little trouble for the quarterback with that snap, but all in all, a good beginning to the Bengals' biggest weekend of the offseason thus far. Marvin Lewis says no major injuries to report, and now more than ever he knows what he's got on the field and in the locker room. Maybe that's the one thing you learn out of this time is you learn more about your players. We got some new guys. We're learning more about them. Uh, you know, maybe than you knew. You didn't know how they would react uh, on the practice field in this stressful situation of competition, and we're learning about them. We definitely didn't take a step back. We're going in the right direction. That's always a good thing. But it's always room for improvement, and that's why we're out here right now, just working hard every day trying to get better getting right for opening day baby i'm at the stage right now where, where learning this stuff is fun to me and um, it's fun to watch other quarterbacks and it's fun to watch john and it's fun to you know throw in last year's game tapes and last year's mini camp tapes and um, it's just fun stuff to learn as day two of bengal's mini camp wraps up today the players were entertained by a pack of german dogs showing off their obedience and protection skills lewis's point the aggressiveness the discipline and how they listen in marvin we trust right Let's go to Paul Brown Stadium. Day two, training camp going on, ragged mini camp. The coaching staff getting a look at the entire roster and how they perform in a live game situation. A wet and muggy day, certainly better than a hot and muggy one like they'll see in training camp, which begins July 30th. But Carson Palmer says his comfort level right now is right where he wants it to be. The main thing for me is just recognition of, of defenses and, and where to go with the ball um, when a certain play comes up against a certain defense. Um, but as far as just, just manning the huddle and, and you know getting the offense up and down and, and get them rolling, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with all that. And Dennis Weathersby now with his eyes on opening day, 2005. Word coming down today, the snake-bitten cornerback will miss all of next season as he recovers from head injury suffered in a car accident back in April. This after being shot just before the NFL draft two years ago. But Weathersby was in good spirits today as he visited his teammates. Countdown is on. 47 more days till the Bengals open training camp at Georgetown. And it appears everything is progressing nicely after this weekend's perfect three-day minicamp. No holdouts, no serious injuries. Let's go to Paul Brown Stadium. We see Coach Paul Alexander watching over his offensive line. Victor Leva getting in some work at center this weekend. Now, the young guys getting a little more acclimated to the pro game like veterans, uh, while the veterans like Carl Powell shake off the rust, the coach was pleased with the effort he saw, but some of the players are reserving judgment. I've been pleased with where we are right now. We just got to, you know, we got to, you know, we're not going to ease up. We got to, we got to get better. You know, we got to run harder, run faster. We got to work harder from now till we get started. I mean, you want to go out there and you want to practice hard. You want to do the best you can do, but, uh, you know, we don't have on any, any pads right now. We're not playing teams from different cities. So until you get into that situation, you can't truly evaluate yourself and see how productive you are. 
Well, he finished last season fourth on the team with 22 catches, four touchdowns, and a 13.6 yards per average catch. Still, Kelly Washington sees much room for improvement in 2004. The second-year receiver spent the offseason working on his roots, but he couldn't shake our Marshall Harris inside the locker room. Harvard with minicamp, the only mandatory minicamp underway. We're talking to Kelly Washington. Kelly, uh, as you go out there, this really isn't much different from what you guys have done, been doing as far as the on-field coaching system. It's the same thing. It's just uh, that everybody's here participating in the camp. It's just more um, detailed, you know, as far as uh, everybody's really just trying to uh, go 100% and uh, learn on you know, each practice. So um, it's about the same practice, but everything's just more intense. You talk about the intensity. Is that raised just because you guys go out there two times a day? Well, we understand that this is the last meeting where everybody's going to be here um, you know, before training camp. So everybody's really trying to push for competition, push the, you know, to gain spots, and, and just really go out and give 100% before um, we go off before the, our break before training camp. So it's intense out there. As an individual, you've had a hard workout session. Talk about just how you progress just in the off season to now. Well, I'm just so much more comfortable in the offense. Um, I know the offense. Um, you know, I, I study. Um, you know, day in and day out, and it's just feel the biggest difference is just being comfortable. And last year, I was just kind of learning on the run. I played a lot. Uh, I played in every game. And this year, it's it's going to be different. I can really go out there and play, use my athleticism because I'm comfortable um, with my position, and, and really just have learned a lot. Kelly Washington working hard through minicamp. Harvey, we send it back to you. Nearly all the Bengals field logos and decals are in Paul Brown Stadium. That black goo keeps it all together. That's the technical term. The first test comes in the preseason opener against August 21st. Patriots for, you know, everything Bengals. Just log on to Bengals Nation. We're keeping you up to date on everything going on. on the and Paul Tagliabu welcomed the chance to talk about the positive uprising that is Bengals football. What the team has accomplished, what Mike Brown has put in motion in terms of change and evolution of the organization is uh, obviously positive. Yes, it is. And you will find everything else about the Bengals at our new Bengals Nation website. Log on to WKRC.com for up-to-date stories, transactions, daily poll questions, and soon message boards and chat rooms. Local 12, as you know, the home of the Bengals. Day two of the NFL quarterback challenge, Carson Palmer and Byron Leftwich in a playoff for the long distance throw. They had tied at 65 yards. This time, Carson goes 63. Oh, that's a winner. On to the no huddle portion. Not as strong here on the run. In fact, misses the short receiver on the sideline. He finishes eighth in the competition. Not bad overall, however, placing sixth. Matt Hasselbeck is your champion. For everything and anything on the men in stripes, check out Bengals Nation at WKRC.com. Transition, stories, poll questions, message boards, and coming soon, the chat room. Local. Kevin Lewis wants his team younger and faster and has revamped the Bengals roster to realize that vision. In fact, just 17 players remain from the 2002 opening day roster now that linebacker Adrian Ross has been released. The 29-year-old had been with the team for six years, starting 34 games, including 12 last season at strong side linebacker, but his season ended early after tearing his ACL in St. Louis. Despite rehabbing back to full health, Ross's $1 million salary too much for backup. Third round draft pick Caleb Miller going to spell Nate Webster this year. On Saturday, starting at 10 a.m., fans wishing to purchase single game tickets can go about it three ways. You can call Ticketmaster, go online at Ticketmaster.com, or head to Ticketmaster Outlet. All games are available, except the two primetime games against the... Welcome back. That is obviously a crushing blow to Miami's title hopes, but what about the Bengals' chances for a Super Bowl this season. Training camp set to open Friday at Georgetown, so it's time we talk some pit skin. Let's throw it over to the voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson. Harvey, thanks very much. Jeff Hobson, Butch Hobson from Bengals.com joins us now. This is busy time. It's always busy time, but now especially as we get ready for this, Bengals going to camp. I, I've been here 12 years. You've been here longer than that. Can you ever remember a year with more anticipation for what a team should do than this year, at least fan-wise? It was pretty close in 90. Of course, they were coming off, uh, I think he was coming back from his knee injury, and they, were, they had almost made the playoffs. They were only two years removed from the Super Bowl. That's, uh, that was close, but given that how hungry people are, I think this probably surpasses it. Plus, you throw in the mix with a franchise quarterback to be, you know, I mean, that's pretty interesting, too. All right, well, let's get to the franchise quarterback in just a little bit. First of all, let's talk about what's gone. Corey Dillon's gone. 
Mike Goff's gone. Brandon Bennett's gone. Artrell Hawkins gone. Jeff Burris gone. There's Did 17. There's 17 guys left from the opening day 2002 depth chart. So we might be next. <laughs> that could very well be. But as you look at it, did they lose anything significant in what they lost or what Marvin Lewis said, I'm okay to lose? Well, I think, uh, you know, on paper, you know, you lose your all-time rusher. That would seem to give you, I think, you, you, that would take pause and say, well, how are they going to replace him? Okay, but you take pause, but they nobody seems it. to be concerned about it. Well, that. they almost made the playoffs last year without him. Uh, you know, I think the thing that gives you pause is not the players who are gone, the one guy, I, you know, the, the, the one guy that I wonder about being gone, though, is Adrian Ross. There's no experience, you know, behind those first Cut uh, three Friday. linebackers, right? There's nobody, uh, there's, uh, there's no, I think there's three NFL starts behind those three guys. That was kind of an interesting move. The interesting thing to me about this camp is just the, really the youth movement. I think by the time this team is cut, it's going to be one of the two of the three youngest teams in the league. And, uh, yeah, Brandon Bennett, terrific on third down. You forgot how good Brandon Bennett was on third down. In fact, Rudy Johnson said when Chris Perry comes to camp, he hopes he watches tape of Brandon Bennett to watch what he did on third down, not only not only running the ball, but catching it and picking up the blitz. So I think there, there, are, there are guys who were lost that uh, they feel like they can replace, but you know we'll see if they were underestimated or not. Let's go to the Rudy Johnson and Chris Perry talk next. As you draft the guy number one, and... In a quarterback, you can sit Carson Palmer because he's at the quarterback position. But do you draft the guy number one at running back and say, we'll, we'll wean him in, we'll make him a third down back? Or is Rudy Johnson in for a rude awakening during this camp to find out whether or not they actually want to make Chris Perry the number one back? I think it depends on, uh, I think it depends on how well Chris Perry plays. If Chris Perry plays well, I think he's going to be fighting for time. But he's a rookie. And, uh, you know, nobody knows the offense better than Rudy. That was one of the reasons he played so well last year. They went to the bye week. They went back to the running game, and Rudy was so in sync with his line. So I think it's going to take Perry a while. But I, I think there's some people that think that Perry can, uh, you know, that Perry might might be the guy eventually. But uh, you know, you have to wait and see how he plays. I mean, they 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 liked the way he looked when he came into camp, and of course, Jim Anderson made the comparisons to James Brooks in the passing game. So I think we're going to see him early on the field on third down. But you know, it all comes down to how he plays. But I. He's going to get a he's going to get a shot, and you know Rudy's going to have to Rudy's going to have to play. Well, as of early Friday, they had one draft pick signed. It's not the Bengals; it's a national trend. Right. The right. week starts two weeks later this year, which right. may be one of the reasons. Right. But it, kind of one of the things that you and I were talking about: a salary cap is yeah. frozen this year, and yeah. nobody wants to stay frozen. They want more money. Yeah, I think there was a two percent hike in the cat in the in the uh, rookie pool, and of course, guys want five, ten, eight percent raise raises. So I mean, I think that's you know that. That figures into it, too. Okay. Um, let, let's go to Carson Palmer, because that's what everybody wants to talk about. Nobody really knows. Uh, but you've certainly watched him. Um, he's good in underwear ball. Nobody really knows past underwear ball how good he's going to be. And you really can't know even through preseason how good he's going to be. Can you? I think he's got... I don't think he's a bust. I don't think he's going to be Klingler or Achilles. Is he going to be Bledsoe? I don't know. That's the, uh, that, that's the question. I mean, uh, he won't be Achilles and Klingler because he's had the experience that those guys didn't have. I mean, four years in a pressure-filled program. He won the Heisman. You look at him, he was born to be a quarterback, and you look at the people around him. Klingler didn't have two. I, I mean, he's got a Pro Bowl tackle and a guy who could be a Pro Bowl tackle. He's got a guy who's maybe can gain 1,300 yards. He's got a Pro Bowl receiver. Uh, uh, the kids get more than those two guys ever had put together. Well, obviously, they're doing everything to make sure that Carson Palmer can't fail. Plus, and, and they didn't rush him. Plus, they didn't rush him. He sat for a whole year. That's another thing well, that he's got over there. And guys. then what they have done is said, you know what, you don't have to score 23 points a game like John Kitna did because we've improved the defense. How improved yeah. is Nate Webster, Kim Herring, Delta O'Neal? How much does that make this defense better? I think that's a big question. I think that is the question because uh, now Marvin will insist that the, that, that the tackle, that, that the defensive line situation doesn't bother him. They tried to go out and get two big tackles. They tried to get Warren Sapp, went to the Raiders at the last minute. That old guy on his back flared up. Two guys that really probably would have, you know, put, him, put that defense maybe over the top. But Marvin is not concerned about the depth behind John Thornton and Tony Williams because I think he feels like that the problem was as a whole. Guys did not know. Guys did, were learning the system. The coaches were learning the system. And I think he feels like there was a lot of bad, there was a lot of bad technique play. And I think he feels like that 60 yard run that Lee Suggs killed him with in the last game of the year. Right. I think he realized that that was a playbook thing and not a, and not a, uh, and not an athletic thing. Okay, we're basically out of time. But as we go into camp, and and people really don't always know what to look for. 
correct me if I'm wrong, the one thing Marvin wanted to do with this team is make sure everybody goes into camp feeling like their job is not safe. He's got competition at, at every position. What's best to look for in this camp that, that we're going to see, oh, this is going to be a race? To me, the best thing is look at the draft picks. I think, I think there'll be, I think more, there'll be, a, I think there's a lot of races, but what I like is Marvin's got, this is mostly Marvin's guys on this roster. That's the exciting thing about it. I mean, you can take your pick. You get an offensive line. You know, you get a scrum on a, on a, you get a scrum in a secondary. You get a scrum at backer. I mean, uh, on the offensive line. Um, I just think the thing to watch is how he's put this team together. It's his guys. It's speed guys. It's athletic guys, and and they're young. And that's to me. That's that. that that's the exciting thing is he is. He's got a blank canvas, man. He's painting. And, yeah, it's you know, basically taking him less yeah. than a year and a half yeah. Yeah. to make it his team. Yeah, and and this is this is it. This is this is what we're going to see. This camp. That's the exciting thing about it. We'll see what Marvin's painting on that campus. Interesting, Butch. Thanks very much, and and away we go. It's football time, Harvey. Back to you.